I was looking through some of your articles, and uh, one of them I knew was an issue, but I actually did not have any idea how large of an issue it is. There are five million wild pigs that are eating hundreds of thousands of frogs and deer and all kinds of things. What in the hell? How did we get a wild pig population in the United States that's causing so much destruction? I tell you what, Vance, if you really want to go back in time, we, you know, we, we look back to the Spanish conquistadors and DeSoto. We know for a fact that they brought hogs with them for obvious reasons to eat. And they did so. And so the, the, the original population of wild pigs today that we have actually dates back to DeSoto. And maybe, uh, uh, you know, who knows, Ponce de Leon before that, I, I personally don't know. But I do know it goes back to DeSoto. And so the numbers of hogs were pretty much limited to the southeast for several hundred years and in low numbers. But most definitely, without any question, over the last 50 years, more like over the last 20, they've exploded across the country. And most states, I don't know what the actual USDA number is. I think it's something like 35 to 40 states now have some sort of wild pig presence. And, and one of the fascinating things about this beast is that it's not just the uh, level of fertility, right? It's not just the gestation period, the amount of offspring, but it's also what they can eat. They can eat anything. Yeah, I mean, you, your article was saying the guy uh, was doing research on him. He cuts open and they have something like 50 frogs in their stomach. And it's like, how in the world does that happen? Right. The, the anecdotes that you get from landowners and farmers are absolutely fascinating. Uh, that's not hyperbole. Fascinating indeed, because you've got a lot of guys that claim that they have uh, killed hogs, for example, on their land, shot them, and then they come up on them maybe the next night or two, and they find other hogs engaged in cannibalism. So that right there tells you uh, what the hog is basically capable of. But as you said, there was a uh, an extension researcher down at Auburn, and he was out with some of his graduate students one night, and they heard the, I think, I can't remember, maybe they were going to to cull a hog or two and they heard the bleedings of a fawn and a deer fawn according to him was in the process of being eaten alive and when they got up on this fawn uh, the, the entrails had all been removed and and this hog was was feasting on this fawn while it was alive so they went ahead and killed the hog and when they performed the necropsy Indeed, I think he told me, I have it in the article, 40, 50 uh, toads. I think they were spade foot toads, which only come out a few times a year, spilled out of this hog. So Vance, when you consider that uh, a wild pig can root and eat whatever it wants below the ground, it can eat uh, insects, uh, birds, hatchlings, toads, it can, it can eat other mammals. And then, of course, it can just rampage across farmland and, and root out freshly planted seeds or otherwise at will, then you, you you ask a reasonable question, which is how do you stop the advance of wild pigs across uh, the, the country? And they simply have not been able to do so at this point. They've got all kind of uh, toxin tests with these various toxins that they want to try and use in the field, but that's got to go through USDA. It's a continuing fascinating uh, uh, narrative and Vance now you've got politics involved because a tremendous amount of government money tremendous amount millions goes toward the halt of the wild pig spread and so now you've got politicians involved and uh, as you know so well once you get politicians involved it's going to get messy yeah, because everybody's got a stake in it. it when I look at the maps, because this became totally fascinating to me, this looks like the, uh, you remember when people were terrified of uh, killer bees coming up from the south? Right. Only like it actually is happening with wild pigs. Like Missouri, not that long ago, didn't have that big of an issue. And in the span of about 10 years, it exploded and has moved as far north as I, I think there was even some in St. Louis County that were having problems. <laughs> And Vance, you don't have to look through the paper too long in Missouri to see that 
y'all state is quite split in opinion over what to do uh, with wild pigs. And you know, I've spoken with the conservation department there in Missouri, and, and they claim, this is what they say on record, that they're going to not just halt the wild pig spread, but they're going to eradicate down to the last hog. You know, uh, the, 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 simp the simple science is that in order to control a hog population, most of the analysts out there say you've got to kill every year 70% of the population. So if you've got to kill 70% of the population and mama can have, Lord, what is it, a couple of litters, six, 10 piglets, and the males are sexually active, maybe at four, five, six months. I, I can't remember what it is. It's astounding. If, if anybody is interested in wild pigs, it doesn't take a second to get on Google and you will encounter a creature like simply like no other. I, I don't think there's another mammal like it that's on four legs uh, in, in North America. It's just, just imagine it's, if you tried to take them all out just using bullets, right? That's five <laughs> million bullets. And that's if nobody ever misses and every single shot goes home, right? Like, and the, the poisoning them, you know, as soon as you put something out that's strong enough to be able to kill a wild pig, it's going to be strong enough to kill deer and children and all kinds of other stuff. So this is like, this is a mess. This is a total mess. It is. It is. It's a. Uh, it's a pretty dang good example of, of invasive species explosion and what can happen. And I suppose that's why we take a look at all these invasive species like the python down in Florida right now. I don't know, Vance, if you've seen any of the stories about the python spread there, but that is, uh, it, it is, is astounding by itself. It makes me wonder if python spread will continue across the southeast, which sounds ludicrous. It sounds like something from pure fantasy. But it's not. I mean, you know, Vance, I tell you, one of the uh, the. the, the Invasive species that drives people the wildest, and I'm sure you've encountered this on vacation or something in the South, and that's fire ants. You know, there simply were no fire ants here at one point, and now you've got a creature that spread from Florida to California and all points in between, and that fire ant, you know, he has those jaws where he can lock in and then use that um, basically a, it's a needle, an injector, and he can pop you three to four times wicked beast he's like the insect version of the a wild pig <laughs> thanks for checking out this podcast short if you like this interview make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and hit that bell so you always get notified about this podcast and if you're really interested in conversations like this you may want to consider joining the articulate ventures network to find out more go to network.articulate.ventures <laughs>